In this lesson, we are going to cover configuring alarms in the WinCC Unified System. In preparation for this lesson, I did create an alarms screen, and on our main screen, I did add in a push button object that will allow us to navigate to the alarm screen, and I also created two tags for triggering alarm conditions. I'm going to open up my HMI demo tags tag table. This is where I created the two tags for triggering alarm conditions. I'm going to select the alarm bits tag. This is a word data type. This is going to allow me to pick individual Boolean bits out of this tag to trigger alarm conditions. In this middle window, there's a discrete alarms tab. So I'm going to click on add new. This will insert an alarm and fill in the trigger tag based on the tag that I have selected above. There is a column for the trigger bits, and this is which bit in the word is going to be used to trigger an alarm condition. You can configure the alarms in this table editor, or you can go down below in the properties view and fill in the information as well. So there is an alarm text column here. So I'm going to enter in the text alarm one. And when I select that alarm condition, I'm going to use the default alarm class, which is the alarm class. The alarm class does require acknowledgement. I'm going to select add new and enter in a second alarm condition. This is going to be alarm two. So I have just created two Boolean alarms by picking bits out of a word tag. And they both belong to the alarm class. The other way to create alarms is actually to go in the project tree and locate HMI alarms. When I open up HMI alarms, there's a series of tabs in the upper right hand corner. The discrete alarms tab is selected by default, and you can see the two discrete alarms that I created at the tag level. I'm going to select analog alarms, and then I'm going to insert a new analog alarm. This time, for the configuration, for the trigger tag, I will select the tag down below. I will go into my HMI demo tags tag table and select alarm analog and accept it. For the limit condition here, if I select this dropdown, I've got a variety of options that I can select from. I am going to select the higher condition and enter in a, a value of 90. So when the alarm analog tag value will go above 90, it is going to trigger an alarm condition. I'm going to go to the general properties for this alarm and go to the alarm class area. It did default alarm class, which requires acknowledgement. I'm going to change it to an alarm class that does not require acknowledgement. So I'm going to select the notification class. For my alarm text, I can go into the alarm text area down below and fill in the information. And I'm just going to say above 90. So this will trigger an alarm condition when the value goes above 90. I'm going to open up the alarm screen, and I'm going to locate the alarm control. It is located in the toolbox under the controls area. So I will select the alarm control and bring that out onto the screen. I will adjust the width of the alarm control so that it uses the entire screen area. I'm going to go down to the properties for the alarm control. The first one is going to be under the general area. And there's the alarm source. If I select on pending alarms and bring up the drop down, I can select the default view for the alarm view. So the pending alarms would be the new alarms that are triggered in the system. So I'm going to leave it as the default. I'm going to go down to the appearance area. And I'm going to select the window settings. And I'm going to select None, and I will eliminate the banner and the Close button. 
So you can see now I've got more room for displaying alarms during runtime. Next, I'm going to go to the miscellaneous area. I'm going to select the alarm view. In the alarm view, we can configure various attributes for the actual alarm control. So what I want to do is change some of the properties of the column headings. So I will scroll down and locate the columns area. The first one that I want to locate is going to be the alarm text column. So if I scroll down in this entry, I can see column number 10 is the alarm text, so I will expand that out. There's a variety of different properties that you can change. For the alarm text, what I do want to change is the width so that I've got more characters or more space to display more characters during runtime. So I'm going to set the width of this column to be 200. So now if I press enter, you can see that my alarm text column now is wider. I don't need this modification column, so I want to show you how to eliminate columns from this view. The modification time column is down below, and it's column number 21. So I will expand that out, and I'm going to look for the visibility property for this column, and I'm just going to uncheck it. That will remove that column and then I also will remove the origin column. So that is in column number five. And I will scroll down to the visibility. And so now I don't have any scroll bars you know, for the columns in the alarm control. Next, I will configure the alarm log. So I'm going to go to the runtime settings in the project tree for the panel. And I'm going to go to the storage system. And I'm going to locate the main database location for alarm logging. Currently, it is turned off, so I will not be able to log any alarms. In this dropdown, I can select which port I would like to log the alarms to. So I'm going to pick the USB X61 port. And then I can enter in a folder where I would store the main database location. So I'm just going to enter in a forward slash and then U logs. This will be the location of the main database on the USB stick X61. Next, I will go into the project tree and I will locate the logs entry for historical data and open that up. By default, the data logs tab is selected. So I'm going to select alarm logs because I want to create a log for the alarm data. So I will select add new and I will call this one my alarm log. Now for the storage media, I need to pick the USB X61 location and I can edit in the table editor or down in the properties view down below. So for the storage directory, I'm going to put in a forward slash U logs, which is the location of the main database and put in one more directory. So I'll put in a forward slash and I will call this one ALM log. And so the individual segments for the alarm log for the database will be stored in this folder. You do have properties for the overall duration of the alarm log in terms of like how long or how much data is going to be kept within the overall database. There is also segment configuration, so you can have smaller segments of data and then you can set how big or how long each segment is going to be. Once I configure my alarm log, I need to assign it to alarm classes to determine which alarms are going to be put inside the alarm log. So I will go to the HMI alarms section. And this time I will select the alarm classes tab. The alarm classes tab, this is where you can configure the properties of the individual alarm classes. So there's a variety of classes that are included by default. You also have the ability to add in your own alarm classes if you would like. For the alarm class, there is a log column. So I want to put all of the alarms that are in the alarm class into my alarm log. 
So I will browse and select my alarm log and accept it. In the alarm classes area for the individual alarm, you can configure various properties in terms of different colors for different alarm states. So I'm going to save my project. Select my HMI and start the simulation. I'm going to go down to the runtime values and I'm going to uncheck keep current user administration and I can reset you know, the current values as well in the runtime system by checking unchecking this box. I also have the ability to go down to the log area and under reset logs, if I want to erase all of the data, I can select reset all and now I will select load. Now I will open up my Chrome browser, log into the runtime system. So I will select my admin user, enter in the password, HMI12345, sign in. Now I will select my alarms screen. There is one system alarm that is present because I'm running simulation the USB X61 port is not available. But we are in simulation, so it will log the alarms for us. I will go up to the alarms bits area, and I will enter in two ones. So this would be the first two bits in that alarm bit word. When I press enter, it will trigger two alarm conditions. And then here's the alarm text that was entered in can minimize this column here. If I look at the raise time, I can see you know, the time and date when that alarm was actually triggered, and they are incoming alarms. I will go over to the alarm analog tag, and I will enter in a value of 91, which is above 90, which will trigger an analog alarm condition. And so now a notification alarm comes in that is named above 90. I will clear the alarm conditions notice that the two alarms classes those alarms did not disappear because they re require acknowledgement when I clear the alarm analog that notification alarm will be removed automatically from the alarm display there is an acknowledge button down below so I can acknowledge the individual alarms the toolbar does have icons for selecting pending alarms, or you can actually display, you know, the alarm log, you know, with an update for new alarms, or just select the alarm log without any new alarms coming in in this view. There is also filtering capabilities, so I can, you know, build queries to filter the alarm conditions. There's also sorting capabilities so that you can sort your alarms, you know, by different columns. So in this lesson, I covered configuring alarms in the WinCC Unified System.